Hello learners, welcome back to the course on labor welfare and industrial relations. We are going through labor welfare if you have uh, gone through the previous lecture. You will understand the background of labor welfare or why labor welfare came up as a required a measure towards industrial relations or uh, strengthening industrial relations specifically. Today we will uh, dig deeper into labor welfare, specifically we will look into intramural labor welfare services. I repeat, intramural labor welfare services. I am Dr. Abraham Sirlaisak, I am a faculty at the School of Business, Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati. So when we look into the intramural labor welfare services, let's understand what do you specifically mean by intramural labor welfare services. So anything intramural is specific to something which is inside. So when you are looking into intramural welfare services or facilities, these are provided within a company's premises. It could be something like canteens. We had touched upon the, the issue related to canteens in the previous lecture. Uh, it could be restrooms. It could be any safety measures to improve the working conditions of employees specifically. So when you are looking into some categorization, intramural happens to be those facilities which are within the premises of the work or the working organization. So it could be anything from a restroom to a canteen, any service which is actually coming up as a facility or is translated as a facility for the worker that will be coming under the ambit of intramural labor welfare services. Now let's understand what is specifically uh, the salient feature of intramural welfare by understanding what is exactly this within the company. So when you are looking inside the company specifically, intramural facilities are provided within the company's boundaries. It could be including activities related to industrial fatigue, safety or plant layout. So essentially there is a categorization coming in as part of inside the company. Another feature would be the militant functions. Let's say unions may use strike or pressure tactics to implement demands for intramural welfare like wage increase or working conditions. So this again happens to be a bone of contention mainly if you look into most of the strikes etc. But when you are actually understanding intramural services, you have to understand it could be anything like let's say sufficient lighting conditions, maybe first aid services, lighting conditions first aid services or even a good layout of plant. If the layout of the plant itself is let us say dicey or is haphazard or it is not in a proper way, then there are obviously issues that will emanate out of occupational hazards or maybe workplace hazards etc. So when you are looking into the intramural welfare activities or functions, these functions are also understood as militant functions because the unions may actually resort to strikes as I have already mentioned or pressure tactics for this. And if you are looking into the intramural function, it may include not only the facilities but also something like wage rise, uh, sanitation, continuity in employment and so on. So it is not only or it should not be only understood as some facility. Rather when you look into the intramural welfare as a holistic term, it covers most of the important aspects like let us say wage rise, proper working conditions, safety, sanitation etc. When you are looking into intramural, it refers to the welfare schemes and activities within the framework of the factory premises. So anything related to safety, uh, having a secure working environment or even the wage part, minimum wages, let us say minimum working hours or the chance or the provision of leave with wages, all these aspects generally come under the intramural welfare. So when you are looking into intramural facilities, please understand the clear distinction. It is more or less related to the facilities that is provided within the premises. But when you are actually looking into intramural welfare, it is much beyond that. 
it is uh, not just facilities, it is everything uh, that can uh, come under the ambit of this like safety, secure working conditions, minimum working hours, let us say minimum wages, uh, leave with wages, all those aspects and this is what makes intramural welfare a, a critical aspect. We should not forget that unions try to resolve intramural issues through collective bargaining rather than just discussions and meetings. So when you are actually understanding intramural welfare, something which is strikingly relevant is intramural services which I have already introduced. When we look into you know aspects like canteen, providing a canteen for workers to have meals is vital. You have you know aspects of restrooms or you know critical functions like crush or uniform, you know drinking water facility, washing and bathing facilities or uh, let us say when you are looking into uh, aspects like aspects of safety, ensuring uh, proper safety measures like fencing, fire extinguishers, uh, good plan layout, all these aspects will essentially come under the the understanding of intramural services specifically. So when you have understood intramural services, it is pertinent that you have to look into the health and medical facility because this is something that comes under or that is something related to intramural facilities. When you are looking into health and medical uh, facilities provided by the company or the organization, we should actually understand it from the ILO point of view. So when a healthy workforce is the need of the hour or is of utmost importance for the industry. The ILO in its conventions and certain recommendations have laid down the standards which had a certain I would say contributory effect on the legislation in India also. So if you look into the ILO convention 25 concerns sickness insurance, medical facilities, sickness insurance related medical facilities or even all those aspects which come under the medical aspects or insurance will also maybe it is maternity protection maybe it is like uh, what I remember convention 103 deals with maternity protection. So in its recommendation the ILO itself clearly talks about ILO conventions and recommendations have, have not only influenced the legislation on uh, critical aspects of sickness insurance and uh, medical facility but also occupational health services as well. So the it made recommendations in fact in respect of workers involved in jobs and special risks also. The Royal Commission in Labour and Labour Investigation Committee in the pre-independence period actually stressed on the importance of health facilities and a unified scheme of social insur insurance. So when you are looking into the ILO, it specifically talks about social welfare and insurance. So there is a certain level of social insurance that is coming in or pitched in by ILO. We certainly now consider the several labor welfare benefits, intramural, extramural, voluntary and statutory all emerging out of these ILO specific standards. Now when you are looking into statutory basis, I should always uh, refer to the Factories Act because the Factories Act provides a statutory basis for health and medical facilities within a workplace. So something could be whatever are the critical first aid services being provided as we have seen or maybe a medical health insurance. All these aspects are critically covered under Factories Act. Please uh, remember that as I have already stated, as I have already stated that ILO standards and conventions and recommendations have categorically affected the legislations in India and Factories Act is no less output of that. When you look into preventive care, the ILO has emphasized the need for preventive care and health services for workers in high risk jobs. So maybe all the safety uh, infrastructure or all the safety harnesses which have to be used while a person or a set of people are involved in high risk jobs, these are all coming under preventive care according to the ILO recommendations and conventions. So when you are looking into ILO recommendations, specifically I would like to you know focus on this class about canteens. ILO recommended that a competent authority guide establishments on canteen, nutrition, hygiene and finance. So it, it does not peripherally recommend 
something like canteen and just you know uh, shies away from uh, doing away other aspects but it categorically underscores the need for canteen and it also emphasizes on the canteen nutrition hygiene and finance so when you are looking into uh, what we have seen as a statutory requirement in case of the factories act it requires canteens in factories with over 250 workers so this is where objective measurement of uh, the implementation of canteen is coming into picture. So, when you are uh, being governed by the Factories Act, it categorically uh, warrants canteens in factories with over 250 workers with worker representation in management and what we essentially need is a cooperative approach. Canteen should be run on a cooperative basis with employer subsidies, please note this is very critical, employer subsidies to provide balanced meals for workers. So, if you visit to a standard let us say job shop or a plant, you will understand that there are subsidized rates that are provided in canteen. There are subsidized rates that are provided in canteen for the simple reason that there is a contribution coming from the employer also. Most of the standardized plants and uh, job shops or work environments do have a canteen and if you have been to any, any I, I can take n number of examples, you go to a plant of MRF, you, any other production facility of any other company, you will see that your food is taken care of, there is a efficiently run canteen and the canteen works on a subsidized rate and the subsidy comes from the employer essentially. So, that is a way the employer is also taking care of its employees. That is also a way in which it shows the appreciation and acceptance and compliance towards the legislations that exist within the country. It shows the compliance towards the ILO recommendations and ILO mandates. So, please understand more than just a trivial acceptance and compliance, it is more than that. It is beyond that. Somebody coming up with a canteen facility for the for the particular worker is actually a way to show that the company or the employer or the organization in itself is responsible towards the health of the individual, is responsible towards a healthy environment across the organization. So, when we look into canteen, we also have another uh, critical facility that most of the company should have and those are crush. When you look into crush specifically, we will see that there are certain statutory provisions that are coming under the Factories Act. The Factories Act specifically requires Christian factories with over 30 women workers with trained staff and adequate facilities. We see that the National Commission on Labor recommended improving standards in existing crush because uh, most of the crush actually existed only in paper or at least they were in a dilapidated condition. So, providing them for smaller units and a better and improved facility is what is actually required. So, when you are looking into the Factories Act, it lays down that in any factory as I have already mentioned 30 women workers, a crush should be there and it should be maintained for children less than 6 years in a very, very clean and sanitary condition. The Act certainly emphasizes that the crush should be under the care of women trained in childcare, not just anyone randomly being appointed. It should be women trained in childcare and should have adequate accommodation, ventilation, lighting, etc. So, uh, specifically when it comes to the facilities given, the intramural facilities, the state government is empowered to make rules and respects of all the standards, the equipments and the facilities that are to be governed. So, when, when you are looking into uh, this specific facilities, mothers are also to be given time to feed the children at necessary intervals. So, it is, it is a holistic arrangement for the mothers as well as for the kid. The rules framed by the state government specifically lay down uh, the qualifications necessary for crest staff. If you go through the details in the law, you will see that the need for kindergarten classes and creches for children between 3 and 6 years was also felt. So, the NCL felt that uh, the standard had to be improved in existing crushes. So, they, they reiterate the CLW's recommendations of crush for uh, let us say I think less than 50 women employees. So, in case of small units, they suggested that the state should provide crush and recover part of the cost from the employer. Now, this is the contributory philosophy that is coming into picture. It should be recovered from the employer. So, employer has to 
take the the leading uh, hand or uh, the employer should uh, be proactive in actually installing or initiating a crush they felt that the statutory regulations for crush should also apply to uh, the contractors uh, who employ women workers so acting upon the recommendation specifically uh, if you see the factories act specifically 1976 there was an amendment which stipulated to provide crush in case the number of women employed in an establishment is more than 30. So this was something which we have seen as part of uh, extended intramural facilities that have come up. When you are looking into the importance of uh, intramural facilities, I'll just take uh, five minutes to actually detail on this. We have seen the existence of intramural facilities, but why do we need? Very quickly, we need to have a healthy workforce. There cannot be any compromise when it comes to healthy workforce, mind my words, because you are actually, remember my words, because you are actually looking into a healthy workforce which can actually contribute to a healthy work and subsequently productive uh, environment. You need to have a healthy workforce. So all the intramural welfare affairs, all the intramural facilities that you are arranging for the worker is subsequently contributing towards the productivity of the company. That realization because of the healthy workforce will actually enable or equip or motivate the actual employer to contribute more to the to the entire scheme of things when it comes to the healthy workforce. If you look into worker satisfaction, every single individual will have to work in a satisfied manner. And that satisfaction comes when you are in a healthy environment, you get the perception that you are in a healthy environment. I can work, my family is taken care of. Even if you are a single parent, your child is taken care of. All these facilities, I need not, you know, work, uh, go back and cook and get back the food and all. I, you know, the company takes care of that all these aspects actually reassures your commitment towards the company and this makes the worker more satisfied and finally if you look into uh, the first two points specifically healthy workforce and second being worker satisfaction if you are having a healthy workforce if you are having the entire workforce satisfied with the environment there will be industrial peace there is no more debate there you have problems you have conflicts always because of disturbed workforce. You look into any levels of conflict, you look into any aspects of conflict, you will see that conflict emerges from discontent. Conflict emerges from bones of contention. Conflict emerges where, where there are situations that creates irritation. When you are having a healthy workforce, when that healthy workforce is satisfied, when the worker itself is satisfied, there is nothing to complain. And what we see as a consequence is essentially industrial peace. Very quickly we will look into intramural, extramural as well as statutory basis of having uh, the welfare measures. As we have seen intramural is all about the facilities and services provided within the company's premises such as canteens and safety measures. Extramural, this is something which is new but totally opposite, diametrically opposite to intramural where we can see that it is pertained to welfare activities and benefits provided outside the company such as maybe housing and community development. So we cannot undermine the, the, the extramural facilities as well. Intramural are essential, are required, there is no denying the fact, but equally important are the extramural facilities that have to be also be given by the employer. When you are looking into the statutory basis, the law also plays a critical role. Intramural welfare is largely governed by legislation like we have already seen, Factories Act, how the provisions of Factories Act actually cater, uh, facilitate to the need of the, the workforce in general. So extramural is more voluntary, please note there are some intramural facilities which are statutory based and are very critical. So what we take away from this class is very important. We look into labor welfare, but when you look into labor welfare, we also have to understand there are two critical aspects, intramural, which we focused thoroughly today, which can be anything, maybe a crush or maybe a canteen. Where we have healthy workforce, I'll try to reiterate what I stated before, where we have a healthy workforce, where the workforce is satisfied, there will be industrial peace. There is no doubt that, you know, in, in such a situation, there will be a conflict. But 
when you are having you know uh, intramural arrangements make sure that your organization is not doing it just for the sake of your statute not just for the sake of the company it is more related to a voluntary aspect that's where extramural comes into picture but our our intention is that if the company if the employer is giving you something on an intramural perspective you are having a blessed employer or you are having or you are working in a very good environment that's what you have to take away from this class we'll see more about labor welfare in the next class till then take care bye bye